Cinemas reflect our emotions, our thought process, our society, and norms. It has been a part of our life for over 100 years. Throughout film history, we have witnessed numerous cinema looks and flavors on screen because of various cinema camera innovations, with each having their own benefits and drawbacks. In today's video, we're going to zoom in on the evolution of movie cameras starting from the first motion picture to the transition of modern digital cinema cameras. So without further ado, let's dive in. At Camera Zone, our mission is to provide the most reliable updates of photography and cinematography gear, including expert opinion based on their performance and value. If you talk about the history of motion video, Edward Muybridge is the name that comes first, who was a renowned travel photographer. In 1878, he used 24 cameras to catch the motion of a horse on a racetrack, but to convert it into a motion, he came up with a machine called Zoopraxioscope. The Zoopraxioscope was a machine that was able to project images in rapid succession, creating the illusion of movement. However, the machine required to use painted silhouettes to project the images on a zooparascope, meaning the footage seen in it wasn't the original image. This drawback was resolved by Louis Le Prince, as he invented the single lens camera that used Eastman's paper negative film to record footage. With this camera, he filmed moving picture sequence of family members called Roundhay Garden. However, not much information is known about his camera as he suddenly disappeared in 1890. In 1889, Edison met the French scientist Etienne Jules Meret, whose chronophotography could capture 12 consecutive images on a long continuous piece of film. Inspired by him, Edison commissioned a team led by William Dixon to make a motion picture camera. Edison also worked closely with Eastman to make a film roll that would stop to take a picture and then advance to capture continuous motion. With the help of Eastman's flexible film rolls and the continuously spinning shutter disk, Edison was able to invent a machine called Kintograph which could capture consecutive images very quickly and then show those images rapidly to give the impression of motion. Dixon was Eastman's assistant and had a knack for capturing pictures, so he was given responsibility for optical improvements on the movie camera. The first Kintoscope parlor, owned by the Holland brothers, opened on April 14, 1894 in New York. Edison's Kintoscope gained huge popularity but people were coming up with more and more ways of capturing images and projection designs to record for a longer duration and display them more effectively. For example, Louis and Auguste Lumiere invented the cinematograph in 1895. It was a camera, a projector, and a film copying machine altogether which was able to project 16 frames per second. It was comparatively lighter and smaller than the kintograph. The first shot taken with the cinematograph was at the Lumiere factory where workers were going home after work. The modern movie camera is deeply indebted to Bell and Howell as they brought revolutionary improvements. The first single-run 8mm film camera was invented by Bell and Howell. The film came in a plastic cassette so that the camera could be loaded in the daytime. At that time, Bell and Howell used to manufacture wooden body cameras which were not fit for all situations. Moreover, the structure was complex to project the motion pictures. Furthermore, once there were two photographer duo, Martin and Osa Johnson, who claimed that the Bell and Howell camera completely destroyed because of mildew and termites, and Bell and Howell took it in their concerns and developed a completely metal movie camera. Bell and Howell 2709. Later on, they decided to use 35mm film for their cameras, which became an industry standard as almost all the movie cameras used in Hollywood were manufactured by Bell and Howell. All those cameras were pretty expensive and used for commercial purposes only. The 
There was a market for consumer level movie cameras and this was first successfully recognized by Pilard Bolex with its 816 model released in 1935. And this camera gained huge popularity in the market as it used 16mm films instead of 35mm which makes it cheaper and more compact. Upon the success of 816, Pilard Bolex came up with their next release, the Bolex H8 and L8 which used 8mm film format and thus making it even more cheaper and sleek. Those less expensive cameras have also influenced the Hollywood industry. For example, Ridley Scott's Boy and a Bicycle which was released in 1665 was shot using Bolex 816. Peter Jackson also used Bolex 816 for shooting Bad Taste which was released in 1987. With the rise of television, movie cameras also underwent drastic changes to meet the requirements of TV production. For example, Panavision launched Super Panavision 70 and Ultra Panavision 70 and both the cameras used a 70mm film format while IMAX also came up with its movie camera which was 3 times bigger than 70mm. In the early 1980s, Video Home System or VHS and Betamax technology were competing with each other for becoming the new standard for video recording. Keeping in mind the requirements of TV production, Sony marketed its Betacam which was the first Betamax camcorder in 1982. Later on, Sony could also sense the demand for consumer level camcorder and released its beta movie and it was a huge success. But then, VHS was making its way in the market and Betamax camcorders were fading out. To keep up with the market momentum, Panasonic also came into the market with its VHS camcorder. While the consumer market was leaning towards more compact models, the cinema industry was still looking for more professional and quality movie cameras. In 1999, George Lucas planned to use a digital camera to shoot his Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones and work together with Sony. This partnership resulted in a high definition 24p camera named the Sony HDW F900 which created a milestone in the history of cinema cameras. In 2007, the 4K video camera made its way in Hollywood with the release of Red One MX. Three years later, Ari released its Alexa series that incorporated a super 35 size CMOS sensor that could shoot in 2K with the ability to capture footage in RAW. Hugo was the first film to use Alexa in 2010, while industrial cinematography witnessed huge progress with the Ari Alexa and other 4K shooting cameras. Still, there was a gap for consumer grade high quality cinema cameras. Though there were some video cameras available in the market, but they lacked the cinematic look, and this is the point when Canon came into the picture with its EOS 5D Mark II camera, which was an affordable camera that was the first full frame DSLR to record video in 1080p. Then comes the mirrorless technology, which took cinema cameras to a new height. Now we have many consumer camera brands with their dedicated lineup for cinema cameras such as Sony FX, Canon C, Red Digital Camera and Black Magic while Ari Alexa still dominates the industrial sector. Today's concept of a cinema camera has evolved with time. Each stage of evolution has something to contribute to the next. This process is continuing as we can see smartphones like the iPhone 12 Pro and others are doing extremely well in producing cinema grade footage. Besides, the rise of indie movie makers has also influenced the market to shift from bulky cinema cameras to much smaller and compact cameras. So what would be the next big change in cinema cameras according to you? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We always crave to learn more. If you think we missed a product or another needed to add, we'd love to hear yours.